Folks, bad news. Ohio State is already one third of the way through spring practice. It only took five of them to get there. Spring ball is just not long enough, but camp uh, week number three is beginning right now. I know Bill Landis is relieved because he doesn't want to see any practices. That's Jeremy Birmingham, and I'm Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us on the podcast daily to start this week. Buckeyes practice Tuesday, Thursday, and here's the good news. There is Student Appreciation Day and a scrimmage on Saturday. Berm and I are going to go watch it, and Bill's just going to chill out, and he doesn't want to watch football. I'm going to watch uh, basketball that day, I think. Okay. Yeah. Early in the morning? Early in the morning, yeah. I'm going to tape the games from Friday night and then watch them early on Saturday morning. Smart. Yeah. This might be... Uh, we have a lot of long running bits on this show. Me latching on to you saying you don't want to watch practice could be the dumbest one. I like it. I deserve, I deserve the ridicule. So it's fine. Yeah. You're never going to live that one down. That one. Okay. So we did not get to see or watch any of those practices last week, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, a scrimmage on Saturday. So instead of things that we learned by watching it, what were the things that you heard last week, Bill, that perked your ears? Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> did we talk? I, I can't remember. We do too many shows. Uh, did I? Did we oh, talk? no. No, don't say that one now, too. We're going to add that into the list. We well, do too no. many shows and we see too much practice. Sorry. We don't, we don't, we don't do too many. Um, it's just that I have a hard time keeping track of what we say and what we don't say. Or like what's recorded and what's not recorded, I think, probably is... is more, more, uh, more appropriate. Um, just to bill it, Bill. Well, I can't, so say. I can't, I don't, I'm trying to avoid repeating myself. I can't remember if we talked much about like the sunny style CJ Hicks stuff and like the possibility of them kind of playing together and what that might look like. Cause does that was, that was really interesting to me. And I don't know, like I asked Sonny about cross training kind of at like will and the nickel position slash sam position which is like basically for anybody who like doesn't follow that like is the position he played as a true freshman like when they throw him out there against wisconsin when they threw him out there against georgia um last year he did some of that too last year but um kind of from a more of a safety spot um and then cj kind of brought up the same thing that he was that he was doing both but but the thing that i don't think either of them were asked and i, I know i certainly didn't ask was are they playing mike linebacker at all and and it's not like I'm trying to like push Cody Simon off the field necessarily. I just, I just kind of think that there's an opportunity to kind of rotate three guys through two spots. And certainly there's the, the opportunity to play more of a four, three defense too, um, depending on the opponent and how much Jim Knowles decides he wants to do that. But as we said, like kind of coming into the spring, like I, I don't know if there's anybody in the linebacker room who like deserves or, or deserves is not the right word, but, but has put himself in a position where, he needs to play the kind of workload that like Tommy Eichenberg was playing when he was healthy. So is there an opportunity then for all three of these guys to kind of play sort of evenly, but in order to do that, then, then Sonny and CJ need to be logging some time as, as a Mike linebacker. Cause I, I do think there's enough of a distinction between the two positions that you wouldn't just throw anybody out there to play Mike if they haven't been practicing at that spot. So um, I'm, I'm intrigued by Sonny and CJ potentially together, but I don't know you know, if Ohio State's actually viewing them that way, at least as like part of the two man base defense. I think CJ Hicks was asked where his reps were coming through the first. Uh, that was through four practices at that point. And if he was working exclusively at will. And he said, no, I'm also getting some reps at Sam and in the nickel. But it, he did not, to my recollection, say that he was getting any as a Mike linebacker. I, I remember taking note of that because it was part of that conversation. And then when I went to talk to Tim Walton about that as well on Thursday, it's like, how can you guys actually play a four three and then take like, I don't know, one of the best nickels in the country yeah. in Jordan Hancock off the field. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. And that was when he told me to just relax. And I was like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I was wondering what you asked him. <laughs> like, I, saw, I saw you talking to him and you were very animated and he was like, very like, you need to calm down, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I do get excitable i guess but he's he was like no. about the box i understand and i ho i hope they he was a, you how you hope they do yeah because and i and i hope that involves cj hicks or sunny styles in the middle because i'm having this fever dream that oh, involves, it's that arvel reese dream again <laughs> yeah it is it's it's arvel reese with cj hicks and sunny styles on the field all at the same time and it's the tarantula making, defense i like it's that. making me feel kind of a way that i haven't felt about the Buckeye linebacker group in quite some time. And I think that 
finding a way to get those three guys on the field together. Like I'm I'm praying for special teams opportunities because those three lined up on one side of the of kick return uh, could be just beautiful to watch. But if you could watch them actually play linebacker together, um, I, I think that it would be really really fun. So I'm hoping that CJ and Sonny are, are repping some at the middle because you play Akron, okay? You play yeah. Akron week, week one. There's an opportunity here to let guys get some reps. So what I'm saying is, give me my dream. Give me Arvell, Sonny, and CJ on the field at the same time. Please. Give the man what he wants. Please. Uh, I'm I'm kind of uh, impressed, Bill, that you started, I asked about anything that we could have heard or seen in some ways, which was Ohio State social media account on Thursday posting Jeremiah Smith having his black stripe removed after four practices, and you decided that we shouldn't lead off the show with that. That's something we didn't talk about because we had C.J. Stroud on the daily for Friday. Uh, so we hadn't had an opportunity to get into that at all, and I think people are pretty excited about it. Here, here's the thing about me, Austin. If you're going to team me up first, you're getting one of two things. You're getting offensive line or you're getting sunny style. <laughs> Got it. And it's no offense to Jeremiah Smith, uh, who looked pretty freaking good in the little bit of, of highlights they put in that video um, where he got his black stripe removed and like, you know, we weren't at the scrimmage on Saturday, but the little bit that comes out of it is like, Jeremiah Smith is awesome. It's like, yeah, we kind of knew that, but I guess it's good to have the the confirmation after Ohio state's first spring scrimmage. Um, yeah, man, like, I don't know. That's I, I, I'm not going to try to, uh, dampen any hype about Jeremiah Smith. Cause it kind of feels like a, like a fool's errand at this point. Um, the kid's destined for stardom, and I, I don't know. Maybe it's going to happen already this spring. I have no idea, but um, everyone we talked to, like literally everyone, was like, yep, he's the real deal. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. then we're going to talk about him that way. You track all these things. Is this a record? Is that the fastest that a black stripe has ever come off? Yeah, the record was Carnell Tate last year, I think after five practices. Um, I think before that, it might have been Austin Mack, uh, like back, was that 2016? Um, I think that was after seven practices. So yes, this is, this is a record. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know you could get a record for such a thing, but congratulations to Jeremiah, the first of many at Ohio state. I'm assuming. I mean, that is pretty quick for a true freshman that that's ridiculous, but burn predicted it. So that's a bold prediction off the, off the list for him. He's a freak, man. Like he's just different, you know? And I, I think back to last week and the things that we hear or see, and to me, it's the princess uh, video from from the royal family. I mean, come on, that wasn't real. That was clearly. Wow. Okay. clearly she, she, she filmed that in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. I didn't know that. It was clearly. A, oh, you said what we saw in the Woody. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That changes a lot for me, actually. Let's. We're not going to open up the can of worms to discuss <laughs> any and everything we saw on the internet over the weekend. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's fair. Um, that's fair. unless it's about Rhea Ripley. Oh yeah, and we can talk about that. I had a feeling that was going to get thrown up. Um, okay, yeah. so no Rhea Ripley and no Catherine of wherever Wales is that her official title? I don't know. I don't keep Catherine. up with the royal She's, family. Oh no, that's a shame. So it is quite a it's quite a conundrum they're having over there these days. Um, I, I think the biggest conundrum that Ohio State has, however, uh, or, or what I heard last week that kind of caught me off guard was the conversation at tight end and we're going to talk to Keenan Bailey on Tuesday. So maybe this will be parsed out a little bit, but hearing Ryan day last week, talk about G Scott as though he's the clear cut number one tight end. Um, and, and I know that it'll change based on alignments and, and formations and all that, but I, I would have expected there to be more conversation about Will Kaczmarek and what role he's taking on. So I'm wondering if, if the adjustment for him from OU to Ohio state is, maybe a little bit steeper climb than we anticipated because the conversation about G Scott seemed pretty clear that he was the guy that they trust at tight end um, and and no one else. So that was a bit of a surprise to me, if I'm being honest. When we were on the field recording snap judgments on Thursday, Keenan Bailey was walking back through the facility with some lunch and I was just like, Hey, how's it going? And he said, "Uh, we're going to get there. And for Keenan Bailey, that was like, you know, his dog had died or something. I've never, I I was like, Whoa, you're the most optimistic person in this building at like all times. And that was, uh, I mean, certainly an optimistic outlook for the long run. Cause he's like, yeah, they're still gonna get there, but 
Uh, I don't think that the tight end position has got off to the ideal start for spring, which again, doesn't matter. There's a ton of football ahead of these guys. We know that they're trying to, you know, take some of that raw clay with Jelani Thurman and unleash that. Will Kazmarek, as you mentioned, Berm is is transitioning from a different level of football and had, you know, he has, has had now just the three padded practices with the Buckeyes. So uh, by no means is that a, a final definitive judgment, but um, certainly we talked ad nauseum about how much Ryan Day wants to incorporate tight ends in his ideal offense and play 12 personnel. And probably at this exact moment, Ohio State is not at the level that it, it wants to be at with that group. There's a, a an interesting dynamic with that unit as well that like there's so much hype about the entirety of the roster and there's all Americans here and first round draft picks there, five star recruits. The tight end group doesn't have any of that. They don't have any acclaim. They don't have any uh, you know massive recruiting profiles. Uh, we know what the expectations and the potential is for Jelani Thurman, but compared to everybody else, they're they're just kind of off on their own and. Uh, hypeless and buzzless and they have a lot to prove i think that's why those foxhole mentality shirts were made up by keenan bailey that he was wearing early in camp so that those guys can embrace that challenge to start proving some people wrong foxhole is what you said there fox fox foxhole mentality okay that's not a that's not about rhea ripley okay great no that that uh, that, that caught my attention too berm and I, I don't know that it's it's not necessarily alarming, I don't think. I think there's enough. Like if you go if you go watch Will Kesmeric in Ohio, there's enough there that I, I think you can be reasonably confident that if it hasn't clicked for him yet, that that it's going to. Um but you wanna you wanna hear about the whole position group, I think, kind of rising as one. Like it's it's good. I think that G Scott is setting the tone in there as like an older guy. Um I but I've like I know I've expressed my concerns about him being able to actually play you know, every down tight end one. Cause I just, I just don't know that the inline block is there unless he's made a tremendous jump this spring, which I suppose is possible, but um, we can watch that hopefully on Saturday to see what that looks like. I'm excited to watch Will Kaczmarek on Saturday. Um, I'm excited to see what, like what Bennett Christian looks like. So it, it is a position group that like is in flux a little bit and, and certainly like very important, I think to both what, what Ryan day and chip Kelly want to do. So it's not like a, I don't think it's a situation where, like you can just like oh well the tight ends aren't that good and like kind of move on like i think that position that like needs to be pretty damn good for ohio state to be what it wants to be offensively even if it's not a room that's going to have somebody like featured as much as kate stover was as, as a receiver like with the blocking schemes that chip kelly wants to run like that position needs to be solid so if they're not there after five spring practices now i, I don't think that's the end of the world but if, yeah. if you bump into keenan bailey next week and ask him the same question and his response is the same i guess i would be a little concerned about that I think about like tight end and linebacker heading into spring. There was sort of a similar vibe to me for me on both those spots. Like if, if a guy here steps up or, you know, but you think about linebacker and the athletic profile of that group is significantly upgraded from a year ago. And at tight end, I don't know that there's been an upgrade. I, I think that there was an expectation that Kazmarek would be like almost a like for like um, athlete type with, with Stover, but it's going to take a minute to figure out if you're that type of guy. And so it, here we are three weeks in, and there's a lot of buzz about linebackers and, and the guys that are stepping up, the Arvell Reese's, the Gabe Powers, what people have seen out of Cody Simon, et cetera. And there's just like, oh, well, G. Scott's the, the guy at tight end, and we've seen nothing else out of to, to get optimistic about when it comes to Bennett Christian or uh, Jelani Thurman or Patrick Hurd or anyone. So it's it's just, it was, it took me off, it caught me off guard just because G has been sort of a throw in the last couple of years at tight end. And now he's being counted on as the man. And that is a, it's, it's certainly a difference, you know, of responsibility for him. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a good one. And there'll be a lot of conversation about those tight ends uh, in this week ahead. Bill, you didn't start with the offensive line, but I know <laughs> with the scrimmage on Saturday, that that's where your attention will be. And if we heard anything last week that, really stood out from Ryan Day about that group. It was that it seems like Josh Fryer is going to be remaining at right tackle, which is sort of the indication that we got when they opened camp. Yeah. Uh, but then nothing has since changed, at least that uh, we're aware of or has been said out of Ryan Day's mouth publicly. Yeah. I, I, when I asked Ryan Day about that, I asked him two questions about it. And he and he did he did mention Josh Fryer as like having the potential to still play guard, but it wasn't 
like as enthusiastically as he said it when we, when we asked him prior to spring ball. Like I, maybe it's something still in the back of their minds. If by the end of spring practice, they don't feel like enough development has, has happened at the tackle position, but I don't, I just don't think we're going to see much of Josh Fryer at guard here um, in, in spring ball. I mean, I'll, I'll eat those words if I'm wrong on, on Saturday and he does get some snaps there, but it, it does seem like they want to give him every opportunity to show that, that he's made progress and can hold down that spot. Um, which really like kind of puts the hyper focus on right guard, but even then, like I don't, I don't know exactly what that looks like. Because the thing, honestly, that was said last week that surprised me the most was that they viewed Tegra Shabola as more of a tackle than a guard. Um, and I, I don't know, I just, I just disagree with that. I, I, and I'm not an expert by any means. I just, from what I've watched of Tegra and and from the way that they've used him in games, like he's only ever played guard. Um, I, I don't think he's a tackle long term. Like when he gets to the NFL, I don't, I don't think he'll play tackle. I think he'll play guard. Now you don't have to be an NFL tackle to play tackle in, in college, certainly, but um, that kind of threw me for a loop because because I I did sort of think that Tegra had somewhat of a chance to win that right guard spot, and perhaps I'm putting too much stock into what Ryan Day said, but it didn't really seem like they were, you know, on high alert really for for Tegra to win that spot. It was more like if Josh Fryer doesn't get it done this spring, maybe Tegra has a shot to be the right tackle like in fall camp in a competition, but but it seems to me like right guard is like Luke Montgomery. Ryan Day mentioned Austin Saravell to someone who can move over from the left side. And we still don't know about Carson Hinsman and whether or not he can move over and play guard. It seems like they're going to let him and Seth McLaughlin kind of battle it out for, for center for at least a couple more weeks, which I think makes sense. Kind of get the, the best out of both of them. But what I thought was going to be sort of like a wide open right side of the offensive line competition, may the best man win kind of deal um, doesn't really feel that way anymore. Kind of five practices into this, yeah. And there's zero discussion about Zen Maholsky, zero discussion about George Fitzpatrick. And so, like, it is a little weird that it, again, this is where maybe there's a, a disconnect between what we all watched a year ago with Josh Fryer at right tackle and what the coaching staff evaluated him as, because it, I, I think that's clear. Um, uh, there is. It, it seemingly no real wiggle room there, and and I'm not sure why that's the case. But we we mentioned that last week, or, or even coming out of the first week of of spring practice, Berm. It's like we saw him struggle a handful of times. I think it was it's either 11 or 12 pressures that he was uh, saddled with, which is a pretty small amount over the course of the of the season. That's one again. They all they all seem to turn into sacks though for him. Like that was the issue. But it, to what you're saying, like if there's a disconnect it's not just us because the other big 10 coaches voted this guy as a first team all conference performer or enough of them did to make him a first team all conference performer so there are, there are other people that agree that Josh Fryer is a really good right tackle his yeah. his mistakes were uh exacerbated because they turned into the worst possible outcome which you can't have that they that's that's a pretty key component of playing right tackle is not giving up sex but uh Perhaps there were other factors involved that that there was a quarterback who wasn't quite as mobile while playing on injured an injured ankle as well. Like maybe different pocket presence could have uh, avoided some of that. I don't know. I'm not trying to make excuses for Josh Fryer. I'm trying to wrap my mind around what, why there is some disagreement about whether he's a tackle or a guard or, or if he's a good enough tackle or an opportunity that should stay in front of him to keep that starting job moving forward. But, other people seem to strongly believe that Josh Fryer is capable of that, and they know way more about football than I do. Yeah, I mean, maybe we just need to shut up and let it happen. You know what I mean? Because mm. <laughs> it seems like that's what's going on. The question is then, if if the who's the competition at guard? If if that's the case, because it's yeah. it's Luke Montgomery and who? You know, because if Shabola is if Tiger is a tackle, it's Luke Montgomery and who? Right. Enoch Vamahi, I imagine. Can't yeah, wait. That, that's <clears throat> that's not that's not an answer though. I, which I and I don't I don't think it will be if it, if it came to the point where like we don't have a guard. I don't think the answer is Enoch Vamahi. Well, well I don't th- I don't think, don't think so Vamahi. either. But if Berm's saying it's Luke Montgomery and who, like that's probably who when they shuffled up the lineups on day two. Yeah. No, Vamahi right. was right back out there. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's a positive development for the Buckeyes or that that would be my personal choice, but he's certainly in it. They could have told him, Hey, you've been here a long time, buddy. And we appreciate your, your contributions to the program, but so long. 
that didn't happen either. Like they want him around. Mission to get to. (laughs) Yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah, I just don't know. Like, what? They've only ever played Tegra at guard. Every time he's gotten into a game, except I guess he was a jumbo tight end against Missouri, but every other game he has played, including the four he played as a true freshman, he's only played guard. And then Ryan Day says, "Like, oh, we think he's a tackle." It's like, okay. <laughs> it seems like you've wasted two years of playing him a guard then when you could get him in the game. It's like I don't I don't understand the disconnect there. I think between me and like the people who are evaluating this thing for a living, whose opinion is more important than mine. But I just I I I see a guard. I actually when when I watched him camp, like before I ever got to Ohio State, I thought he might be a center. Um and certainly I see more of an interior player than I do a, a tackle, but um which is just to say like I'd like to see him get a shot to win the job if only to ratchet up the competition. I, I would, I, I don't want to see Tegra like only get kind of like backup tackle reps in, in the spring when I think he could at the very least push Luke Montgomery and, and kind of keep him honest as he tries to, to lock down a starting job. So just seems like a little bit of, of a misguided usage of, of a young player like Tegra. This I is want pure to show. Uh, uh, sorry, Austin, but I, I, I want to start a new show on the podcast where it's called bill fold right and we're just going to have bill sit down and talk to someone different every week about his opinion and that person's opinion let's let's say hypothetically justin fry we'll have bill and justin fry sit down and justin fry will try to explain to bill why his way is right and then we'll see bill fold Uh, how long does it take for bill to fold but the problem, the problem with that is like when we talk to Justin Fry, I will ask him about like, hey, Ryan Day said Tegra is more of a tackle than a guard, and Justin Fry will just say, yeah, we're going to play him at both spots. Like that's not that that'll that'll be the answer, and then I'll be more confused. I don't. Bill's got pretty strong convictions. I'm not know, sure that the show would be great. How long will it take? We could put money. Wait. It's if he never fold, if he never folds, what's the point? It'll just be an ongoing, never-ending show. Yeah, no one wants that. Someone's always going to fold. So if if the goal is to see if Bill will fold uh, by the other person's opinion, but maybe the other person folds. Justin, I, I, I would like very much like, and it's not like, again, my opinion doesn't doesn't matter much. I, I guess I I would like someone maybe to tell me what they think I'm missing, if which like I could very well be missing quite a bit. Um, if I think that Tegra is more of a guard and less of a tackle, and like think he should think I believe he should be treated as such right now. Like why why do they not see it the same way? This oh. is pure, reckless, wild speculation. But I'm gonna try and come up with an answer for it. And that is maybe Tegra Shibola wants to be a tackle. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I I don't have any insight on this whatsoever. I've never asked him about it, never asked Justin Fry about it, never asked Ryan Day about it. But sometimes the way they talk about it. And pairing that with the way Ohio State talks about players who have to be bought into a position if they're going to make a switch, a steel chamber situation, Sonny Styles going from safety to linebacker, whatever it is, Cade Stover moving all around before settling it tight end. If they don't want to do it, Ohio State can't force them to. So I don't I don't know this. Maybe Tegra Shibola believes that he's a tackle and wants to play tackle. If if what you're saying is correct, Bill, that's like it looks like he's a guard. Ohio State has played him at guard, and he's suddenly not in that conversation at ever, for at all for reasons we can't understand. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe he wants to compete at tackle, and that's it. Um, I could absolutely tell, be wrong. Him, yeah, and if you tell him, well, sorry, we're going to play at guard, then he'll be playing tackle at Kentucky. Right. Yeah. So, no, I, I get it. Yeah, I think I think you. That's probably that probably is partly the truth. I would imagine. Yeah, I, I don't know. But if that if he doesn't want to be there, you can't force him to play. It's not going to work, as Berm said. Like they have, there's more opportunity for guys to leave. And I'm I don't think Kentucky ever stopped talking to Tegra Shabol in the last two or <laughs> two or three years, unless I'm mistaken. But again, I'm wrong a lot. Maybe that will be another case. But we're going to find out if we can get some things right in the week ahead. A couple more practices, a couple more media opportunities Tuesday and Thursday, and then uh, a Saturday Student Appreciation Day scrimmage that we cannot wait to cover this weekend uh we're gonna have a lot up until then on the podcast daily all week long thanks for kicking it off with us on a monday for bill and berm i'm austin we'll see you later